Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, we'll be talking about a pretty large storm system. Actually, two of them, one that's occurring today into tomorrow and this weekend, and then another one that will be following it very shortly after with more rain and thunderstorms. So there's a lot of stuff to talk about. I will be talking a bit about <clears throat> the severe weather threat, the long range, what's to expect in a 6 to 10, 8 to 14 day outlook, and uh, various other topics about the weather. So if you guys, um, at any point enjoy this channel enjoy this video consider subscribing or giving a like otherwise uh, feel free to leave any comments down below any questions comments concerns and let's get started with this video okay so the first thing i want to look at is the radar of the united states so notice that we have a very very large spring uh storm it is multi-faced right we have a lot of uh rain across the north uh, severe weather towards the south and we actually have a bit of sun on the western side of this. While it is predominantly rain, as we are in a very, very warm outbreak of air across the United States in early April, yesterday we had one of our earliest, not earliest, but definitely one of the earliest ones in the past few years, 80 degree temperatures here in Chicago. A very pleasant, but at the same time, a bit of a concern. It's been very dry, not just here in Chicago, just all across the Midwest, the Great Lakes, uh, especially as you get towards Upper Plains, portions of the Southeast, the West, obviously dealing with the drought. That's a growing sign of concern. We've been seeing these rainstorms, right? But just a ton of uh, the U.S. is covered under some sort of drought or abnormally dry conditions. Um, and it has, that has been increasing for the past several years. So notice, right, there was our snow across Nebraska, South Dakota, very... Uh, Pretty nothing too significant, right? Uh, there were some winter storm warnings earlier for Rapid City. Um, that has been canceled. There are some winter storm watches, but that is for a new system, right? The previous one, this one right here already finished its up, finished its doings. We have a lot of things to keep track of. So we have an area of rain and showers across Kansas, right? That was kind of developing. Now it's uh, actually in some portions, it mixed in with some rain. We did have quite a good amount of rain pushing to Minnesota, North Dakota, <clears throat> South Dakota, Canada. Um, typically, this would be more mixing in with snow. However, it's been very warm and actually some severe even weather reports haven't reported as far north as Minnesota. Nor notice, right, that continues feeding in um, more of a light to moderate batch of rain. It has transformed into, at this point, the thunderstorms that earlier were a bit more scattered. Notice, though, to the south, we have a lot of activity. So what we have is this cold front that's starting to erupt. We have a few showers and storms out ahead of it, and, and um, kind of in this warm front section. Uh, section, but again, anything the really east of this area is extremely warm. And notice we have some pop-up thunderstorms across Indiana, Illinois. We have a few storms that could uh, be hitting the Chicago area, southern Wisconsin, central Illinois, northern Missouri, and look at this. Right here is our main concern for severe weather. It is extremely um, blowing up with a lot of precip, a lot of rain, a lot of thunderstorms, many of them small, some of them large clusters, large lines. That could be obviously damaging wind, hail, and I would want to show you this <clears throat> in play. However, this radar is taking a bit to load. There we go. We got it to load. Notice that for the past two to three hours, this thing has exploded, right? This is what it looked like at around 12. And now, it, ever since then, it has continued to pile on moisture, a lot of rain, a lot of thunderstorms. And uh, you can see that some of these are kind of just popping up in random locations. As Again, it's very warm. The environment is rather conducive for these storms, even if it's um, early April and the Gulf of Mexico is kind of closed off. So, again, a concern, if you were to take a look at the Storm Prediction Center, they have an enhanced area for Arkansas and northern Louisiana and eastern Mississippi. This isn't anything too extraordinary compared to what we saw. However, I do want to say that the last couple of weeks, the events with, I'm sure you, you noticed, or you knew of them, we had two areas under the high, right? The high uh, outlook or high risk. That is extremely uncommon to get such a... Uh, two, you know, two occurrences in sh such a short amount of time, and a lot of people now are going to be downplaying maybe the enhanced, maybe even the moderates, the slight, because they've seen such high risks getting put out, and they think those are the only major events. That what happened was truly something that doesn't happen on even the decade basis. So, uh, and I don't think I'll. I think it'll be hard to come by to see another high risk for this whole year. I think there might be, but a lot of people are again are are just getting too excited by the storm season. And think this is going to be some sort of high risk getting issued every single uh, week of the month or even monthly, which again, maybe one more. Um, but again, that will be hard to come by. Um, I don't think that there will be uh, three uh, or more than three in uh, 2021. 
which uh, may be a bit disappointing for those that want those, but again, that's rather a good thing. That, that uh, is rather rare. Notice enhanced, right? Memphis, Shreveport, Little Rock, uh, Jackson, Mississippi, Boiser City. These areas could still see large hail, damaging winds, a threat for tornadoes. If you were to look at the categorical risk, right? Um, sorry about that. My phone was buzzing. You can see that the categorical, this is what it shows. Tornado, it's pretty high. Nothing too extraordinary. But the 10% is definitely something to keep an eye on for. Wind is most definitely higher, as you could see. Um, this uh, radar is showing these storms have a tendency to form these squalls. And right there, right? That is forming some pretty heavy rain. Gusty, gusty winds, which is why the wind threat is the highest. And of course, the hail is there. But again, and notice a random spot to the north, right? Again, that is because hail usually uh, meets colder temperatures up aloft. And because winter is still hanging on, that is plentiful up aloft. And that hail could be a bit more conducive to form, especially in such early heat waves in April than one would think. Again, um, that's a potential for it, and you can see uh, this is our current outlook. Okay, let's go to the HER model and time this out. This is a model that I, I like a lot. However, again, this is not a winter storm, so tracking each individual's thunderstorm will be a nightmare, and with the technology we have is impossible, and we can't predict every little storm developing. So usually with a winter storm, you could predict a large area of precipitation and you have relative confidence, but even those, as shown in previous events, are hard to predict and sometimes can be completely off. Now, in terms of thunderstorms, yes, you could predict where a giant squall line will occur, but not individual cells, which could um, wreak havoc, to say the least, or at least uh, ruin your day by bringing a torrential downpour, right? Causing you even ponding on roads if it's strong enough. Okay, let's time this out. This is 2 p.m., 3 p.m., Notice right off the bat what we could assume, well, it's underplaying the amount of rain going on across Indiana, northern Illinois, across uh, Nebraska, Iowa, and you could see that on the radar. It's a bit more impressive. Um, again, though, relatively good job. It is underplaying this cold front. This is what it has at 2, 3, right? It's a bit stronger than that. It has quite a few more cells, especially to the south, which this underplays. However, eventually, the, the her model does advertise for that formation of those <clears throat> for those systems or, or those cells, notice that large rain shield to the north continues and actually gets fueled by some thunderstorms, which again, could have some hail, um, as you saw by the Storm Prediction Center issuing at 5% there, which uh, may sound tiny and abysmal. It's not that small. Um, it's not high either, though. Notice that this line by <clears throat> the early afternoon into the mid, mid to late evening hours forms into a large conglomerate of cells thunder showers right heavy to moderate rain and this is racing to the south and east and into the northeast depending on where um your location is right if you're in the southeast it'll come from the north and west if you're to the um illinois central illinois indiana kentucky tennessee will come from the east uh southwest area or sorry from the west southwest notice right up to the north less cells but there are squall lines for example right there crossing the mississippi river at around 7 8 p.m notice that this cluster storms isn't really that organized it's not a super damaging wind event you know you can see that there isn't really a defined squall line there will be in some locations say across mississippi <coughs> alabama um sorry mississippi tennessee maybe eventually reaching alabama and georgia and louisiana uh, there will be pockets of where the winds could be definitely severe and that's why the <laughs> storm prediction center has enhanced issued however notice that all along this there's pockets of behind that are kind of like a uh, little thunderstorms out ahead of it so just a really a probably a heavy rain event for the most for the most part so if you're uh, wanting rain that's a good thing if you don't want rain definitely a bad thing but it will be at its peak intensity at around 9 and 10 o'clock today in the afternoon and that's what i want to point out the strongest thunderstorms probably around six to you know, six to nine right and then in terms of heavy rain potential probably around that same time maybe just a bit after as these storms weaken and uh, maybe you know reach below their criteria of severe weather, but still have a lot of rain potential with them. Notice to the north, you know, across Illinois, Wisconsin, uh, Indiana, Ohio, pockets of storms, showers, none of them really should be severe, though some light to a uh, moderate rain. Um, well, obviously in the thunderstorms themselves, possibly heavy rain will be possible. And maybe some light, uh, P, you know, pea-sized hail, nothing too extraordinary. Notice what happens at this line. It stays pretty well organized to the south, across maybe Alabama, Mississippi, but to the north, it starts weakening. We see showers and storms all around it, and we eventually it kind of fades away, and pretty quickly by four o'clock today in the morning, um, the wee morning hours of tomorrow, not today. You can see this low pressure still spinning 
but it's barely dragging anything. This cold front just dissipates. Pretty sad little uh, system comes of it. Notice by tomorrow, though, there will be warmth, right? The warm air mass. So a revival of storms is possible. Notice, not organized. However, there are pockets of um, some storms that could, you know, have maybe potentially, uh, you know, a moderate sized hail. Not severe, nothing that should cause too much damage, but potentially in isolated cells, some some uh, larger hail as possible. Very heavy rain and a few squall lines that could be coming through and some winds. And notice that uh, that pivots through most of the afternoon and it tries organizing again, um, probably more of a rain event with isolated pockets of some storms. Uh, notice tomorrow quickly again, by the nighttime hours, it dwindles down and the low pressure, instead of moving to the east, what it has been doing, starts moving to the north and uh, again that brings in more rain showers through friday across the midwest maybe a little bit further to the north but here's where we start developing our next new system notice this system to the south is almost absent right it's completely gone we do have some snow across nebraska wyoming and south dakota which is why we have those watches up those few counties of sorry i zoomed in on my location looking at a, a rain event hoping crossing my fingers right now um, notice that right there just west of spearfish there could be some snow uh they could probably, uh, they probably will expand these watches into maybe some advisories further around. But three to six inches, not a massive event, but definitely something to keep an eye on for right there. And we have a new system, right? Warm air getting pumped to the north again. And the her model stops at this time because this is how far it goes. Notice continued light to moderate rain across the north. So Minnesota, Wisconsin, the northern plains, uh, just east of the northern plains, into North Dakota, South Dakota. Um, some pretty good amounts of rain through this whole event as that will be spinning there for a few days uh, Notice several locations definitely picking up good amounts notice if you were to take a look at uh, the uh, Say the R gem which goes out further than what the herd model does and we could actually start looking at that new system So here's our old system right shower storm still possible across Michigan, Illinois into Saturday and uh, Friday night into Saturday Wisconsin, Minnesota as well and into portions of southern Canada Notice, no snow very far to the north, the rain snow line. But look, look what happened to the south. This could definitely be a severe event that probably, uh, you know, will have it enhanced. Maybe in a, a few locations, uh, maybe even a moderate. And uh, as of now, still a lot of details, right, to be unsolved. It's 64 hours out. But look at that. Very, very strong signs of some pretty heavy rain, severe weather. And this system organizes itself and pushes to the north. Look at that. Very strong squall line up. Storms, showers, uh, you, hail, rain, all of that stuff that it's uh, you know typically expected with uh, events like this. Uh, maybe more of a derecho type event you could see kind of forming into this line. Uh, maybe not a derecho, but you get it. A squall of line, a line of thunderstorms that could form to squall line that uh, could produce some pretty damaging wind that just feeds off of each other. And notice to the north, the rain with some more additional thunderstorm spreads. Uh, with very warm air, again, uh, potentially cold air starting to make it retreat into the northwest. Um, or a comeback through the northwest, which could paint the uh, next 10 to the 15 day outlook as a bit chillier than average for most of the United States. I do want to show you the jumping around like a maniac. I want to show you the total accumulated precip. This is what it thinks will happen through 84 hours. Again, this frame right here is kind of taken in the middle of that second storm system, so more rain will be falling than what is shown here. Uh, you know, as long as our gem is correct, which again is if you notice northeast, not much. Up until uh, the weekend, right, mainly focused across the Midwest, the Great Lakes, the South. Um, and again, not much across the West, a bit of the Northwest uh, with some uh, with some rain as well. Uh, let's take a look at the GFS, a longer range model. So, right, here we have our first storm. You can see spins away for several days. Here we have our second system, moves more rain to the Northeast. This time, again, kind of takes its time, takes its time, spins away for a few days. And then look, we have an, another system that actually brings maybe snow into the North Dakota area. Oh, yeah, nothing too extraordinary to see snow in April. Uh, it's just that compared to this pattern we've been seeing, definitely a cool off. And notice that cool off could spread into the Great Lakes, the Midwest. So if you're wondering about the long range outlook, like you've, your trees are flowering, your garden is ready to be planted. Advertise caution as this heat wave, this warmth won't last long as many good things don't, right? And notice uh, we could even see some rain, snow showers. It doesn't look to be a bitter Arctic, you know, change or blast, but it will be a large change. That's the deal compared to the 80 in Chicago we could be looking at potentially next week, you know, 30s. Um, so, yeah, pretty chilly. And notice um, we do see rain, snow, especially across the northeast. Uh, 
that could uh, provide a, a bit of more snow across the Maine, New Hampshire, Canada area. And then notice the cool air lingers as marked right here, but it gets driven off in the long range, obviously, as the pattern continues to warm up. And you can see more storms potentially firing up in terms of large systems. Uh, taking a look at the two meter temperature anomaly, let's just show you at the very end, right there, warm, but throughout these two periods of warmth, which one we are in right now, we have a sandwiched uh, cooler air mass. And nothing extraordinary, shouldn't do any much damage, um, at least we hope. But uh, you can see that some of these very chilly temperatures could dip down pretty far to the south. That's definitely not a good thing. But um, it looks to be on a weaker side. Notice. That's what the GFS says, and the Climate Prediction Center agrees. The 6 to 10 day outlook, 12, 12 through the 16th of April, below average for much of the central U.S. And 8 to 14 mimics the same, and they're actually more confident in this one, even though it's further out, meaning that probably will be colder here, um, especially across the south. So uh, if you're enjoying the 80s, maybe even some you know 90s across the south, that will probably come to crashing in soon, uh, into mid-April. Hopefully that doesn't last long. And that's what the models think uh, will happen. It won't last too long, guys. The, you know, the, the April outlook for the Climate Prediction Center was advertising a very warm April. So this will probably be short-lived, but definitely something to note of. Um, and uh, that is basically, I just wanted to cover the threat, you know, these storm systems that will be occurring, this potential cool-down after this warm-up. And of course, stay uh, stay tuned to your no local National Weather Service. Uh, just, you know, keep an eye on the sky. Be, be weary of all the storms that could be. In some areas, kind of popping out randomly, and uh, I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. Thank you for my, thank you so much for watching. See ya.